So will you get more respect as an adjuster if you pull up in a three quarter ton pickup with a ladder rack? Will running claims in an old beater jalopy with a folding ladder bungee to the trunk lid give you a lower customer service score? In this video, part of a much longer interview with adjuster YouTuber Andy Patterson for his channel Patterson Adjuster Training, I talk about property field adjuster vehicles. Which ones are the best? Which ones are the worst? And should you buy new or used? Starting now. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Hey, Matt here. Welcome to Adjuster TV, where we help you build a rewarding career as an independent insurance adjuster so that you can help people during natural disasters and earn a great living doing it. My favorite recent comment comes from Gerald, who says, it's great what Adjuster TV is becoming. The industry will benefit because of what you are doing to help adjusters and firms better understand each other. Keep up the good work. Thanks for watching, Gerald, and thank you for your support. Okay, before we jump into which vehicle you need to run storm claims, are you tired of sitting on the bench and hoping that somebody at an IA firm notices your resume? Would you like to learn how to be next in line for work as a new adjuster? Then you're gonna wanna check out this new free live masterclass. In this new masterclass, you're gonna learn how to show up with the right skill set so that you can guarantee that you'll be next in line for a storm deployment. IA firms rely on dependable adjusters and they're looking for adjusters with a set of key skills. Focus on the skills that matter and worry about the rest after you've started earning money as an adjuster. And because IA firms need you to be prepared when they put you to work, in this free training, I'm also going to cover the tools and gear that the very best adjusters use and where you can get them. And finally, learn which licenses IA firms value the most and how the right licenses will hugely increase your deployability. So if you've been stuck on the sidelines waiting for your chance to handle property claims, this can be the turning point that you've been waiting for. Learn how to skip to the front of the line by registering for this free live masterclass at adjustertv.com slash thrive right now. Okay. Back to the video. The million dollar question, almost literally these days, does it really matter what kind of vehicle you drive for claims? And in my humble opinion, what's the best option if you're ready to buy a vehicle for running claims? Check it out. One of the things that I heard from policyholders, whenever they had a, uh, a, a poor inspection, they would always, not always, but they would sometimes mention, well, the, the guy or the gal, they showed up at a Honda Civic with the ladder uh, attached to the roof and they just run the bungee cords through the windows and <laughs> and it and and so part of me thinks if i was running claims right now i probably would just get a folding ladder and something good on gas but on the one hand you don't you kind of lose credibility with a contractor or a homeowner just because there's just the optics there's something i guess more um, appealing about somebody pulling up in a truck with a ladder rack versus a Honda Civic with a folding ladder, but you're saving money on gas because that's cutting into your expenses. Well, if you if you show up in a a three quarter ton truck, you're getting ten miles to the gallon. The optics yeah. are better for the policyholder and the contractor, but that gum, you're not going to make any money. What would be your advice to find a happy medium there? Well. <clears throat> That's a, you know, that's an interesting insight that, that I haven't had that much, haven't really been that privy to that, you know, if, if it's that big of an issue for the, for the customer, for the homeowner, um, my, you know, without that knowledge information, my thought was always, well, I don't want to be showing up in a BMW or a Mercedes or an Escalade or something like that. Um, and then, you know, denying claims because that's going to show up on my customer service survey. You know, well, you know, your insurance company, they're paying their adjusters and they're driving around BM Mercedes and BMWs and denying my claim. On the other hand, you know, you don't want to be showing up in, it, you know, in a car with like the paint's peeling off and fading and the headlights out and the guy's got to open up the hood in order to start it every time. And it, it looks like it just, he rolled it off the, the junkyard lot you know, we bought it for fifty dollars, 
you don't want to be that do that either because that's you're representing the company. So my thought was always, well, if I show up in a in a nondescript um, late model sedan, four door, you know, kind of a car, uh, or like a, 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 a I'm going to say nondescript in front of every single one of these things, a minivan, a nondescript midsize pickup truck. Um, I don't think a p- pickup truck is necessary to do this work, uh, or a nondescript SUV. Even an SUV, like mine, is it, when it was brand new and for for several years it got 22 miles to the gallon. I don't get that anymore out of it because it's got 500,000 miles on it. Um, but I would say I, I would look at um, like what are if if I'm going to be met out in the field by a, a QA. Which they do sometimes, like they'll say, "Hey, Matt, let's, you know, I want to ride along with you on some of your claims." Okay, cool. That person shows up. Um, I'd say ninety-nine out of hundred times in a four-door, nondescript Chevy Impala, you know, something that's not like p- sparkly purple or red or whatever. It's just like a, a white with door magnets on the side, and you you'd for- instantly forget it. It's like, you know. The, the number one getaway car in New York City is a yellow cab, right? Because it just looks like every other car. <laughs> um, so that would be my advice as far as like, you know, I, buying a pickup truck is not necessary, I, I don't think. You know, if you can afford it and you really want to, sure. The other thing I would add to this as far as vehicle goes, you know, vehicles, is that you got to take into consideration the fuel economy, certainly, but... Um, you also need to take into account the fact that the vehicle is going to get a, not only a lot of miles on the drivetrain and the engine and everything, but it's going to get a lot of hours on the engine, right? So and it's not so you're not just like, well, my car has got X number of miles on it. That's how much wear it's got. If it's an adjuster, if it's 105 degrees outside and you're sitting in your truck, fall, you know somebody calls you and you pull over, or you're sitting in the truck in, front, in somebody's driveway. Um, you're gonna have the, it's gonna be on with the AC on. I I am. I mean, if 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 I'm running claims and gas is five dollars a gallon, I maybe I'm not doing that. But um, normal circumstances, um, my car runs all day long with the AC on. I, le- I turn it off when I go to do the inspection because I don't want. That's clearly wasting gas. But I jump in the truck, turn it on, you know, plug my laptop into the inverter and get to work. Right. That's a lot of hours. That's hours and hours and hours on the engine, just sitting there idling with the AC on, which, you know, that's wear and tear. When people think about like, well, what vehicle should I get to be, to run claims? I think a lot of times they're thinking about what vehicle do I want to get that I can also run claims in? When they really should be thinking, what vehicle can I also get that I can run claims in? And that's all that that car does. I keep it well maintained. You know, it's, it's got to, always got a nice fresh, you know, oil change going on in it. All the fluids are topped up. It's ready to go when storm season hits. I leave my Mercedes at home. I leave my Escalade at home. I leave my my F-350 Lariat or my Silverado or whatever at home to not get hundreds of thousands, you know, 55,000 miles in a year and then hundreds of hours on the engine sitting there idling because you're going to do it. because It's going to be too, screw this. I'm going to roll the windows up to an AC on. Um, that's your, your, your stay home car, your family vehicle, the, the one that you, you know, the, the, the adjuster vehicle that you have is almost like laptops, right? It's it's almost like a disposable thing. I don't tell people to go buy gaming PCs because I think it's o- absolute overkill, and the field is rough on gear, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you if even if it just stays in your hotel room, it's going to get banged around. I mean, it's just it's not going to last that long. So if if you're if you've done some storms and you've got a bank of money, you went on a hurricane and you you know you're like I've got you know. 50 extra thousand bucks sitting here, 75 extra thousand dollars sitting here. I'm going to go buy a new truck. Uh, if it were me, I'm going to take $12,000 out of that and go buy a used little SUV, put another four or 5,000 bucks into it if I have to, replace the radiator, replace the starter, because you're going to start and stop all day long, right? Just Let's just, let's just start with fresh here. Replace the radiator, replace the starter. Um, make sure that the wheel bearings and everything are good. Um, top up all the fluids, get it caught up on its maintenance schedule, do a tune-up, water pump, timing, all that stuff, right? New tires and get it cleaned up really nice. Make sure the AC works. Make sure the heater works. Make sure everything works the way it should. And then that's my storm truck, right? I'm paid cash for it. I, it's, it's, I don't, I'm not going to, 
I'm putting myself in the position where I'm not gonna have a breakdown in the middle of the summer and it, on a storm, which I've had. Anytime that you like stuff breaks down on you on cat, you're losing money, instantly losing money. Every minute that passes where you're sitting there in a waiting room, but just money's going out the window, right? Um, and that's gonna be my storm, my storm vehicle. It's gonna be a little, you know, a little SUV, some kind, probably something Japanese, um, you know, a Nissan or t- I don't know, if Toyota. Is Toyota? Oh yeah, like a RAV4, I, something like that, right? Um, that's that's known for being reliable for longer, right? With less like little weird repairs. And you know, if there are repairs, it's not like a Ford F one fifty where you have to take the whole cab off in order to replace one spark plug, kind of a thing. You know, and it right. costs five thousand dollars, which is ridiculous. So it's, yeah, vehicles. It's another piece of gear. You know, long story short, it's 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 something that. I don't want I don't want to you know beat up my nice vehicle that I have at home by taking it out on the road, just having it parked in hotels next to the airport. I might I had a, a fifty five thousand dollar pickup truck that I bought brand new when I was early in my career because I thought I was being cool and everything. It was a great truck to up to a point. Got egged in the parking lot at the hotel just randomly or keyed or people throw trash in the back of it. Stuff's gonna get it's gonna get wrecked. You know, you, you may have to go out and do some farm and ranch claims and, and the, following the farmer out down this, a paved road, it turns into a gravel road. Then he turns off into a mud thing. You got four wheel drive on there? Oh, let's go, come on. Right? Leave your nice vehicle at home. Take some, take some, take some of your, I mean, I mean, when you first start, use what you have, right? But once, you, once you've decided that this is for you, don't be going and buying some super duper expensive brand new trucks. You think you deserve it, because you don't. You know, you don't deserve anything. You deserve to be smart about what you do with your money, right? Take care of your things, get yourself something that's reliable, put some money into it to make it even more reliable so that it's, if it, it, it's, stuff's gonna break down, but when it does, it's, it's a better chance of it happening when you're you know, driving home from the storm instead of driving you know, right in the middle of storm season. Um, that's, my, that's my thought on vehicles. As far as like what the insured sees, if, they look out there and it's just nondescript whatever and it's not a car that pops out one way or the other like super high end expensive car or a beater with big dents that haven't been repaired or just, you know one red door and the rest of the car is blue cuz it's you know they've replaced the door on it that's going to be the key thing for me and i would say even that the the and you can correct me if i'm wrong on this but it would seem like if if the insured is complaining about the the adjuster's vehicle that may be that that was, they're already getting a bad review to begin with because they mishandled a bunch of the other things. And oh, by the way, I pulled up and it's, what are you guys pulling people off the street kind of thing? You know, or, you know, is that guy like a dentist, you know, and it's doing stuff on the side and he's got this expensive car. Um, they need to bring, if they bring their A game and they have, a, you know, a, a gently used vehicle that they've put some, a little bit of work into, maybe, they, maybe he spent $3,000 to get it repainted, right? Replace the headlights. I replaced the headlights on my, my Forerunner. Um, last year, Rock Auto, $160 delivered for the, both of the, the headlamp units. Unscrew the yeah, old Rock Auto is the way to go. Brand spanking new. So, yeah, I would say you need to be a good adjuster. Drive something that's nondescript that nobody's going to remember. Non A non-memorable vehicle more than anything. There's no need to have a big pickup truck because you, you're carrying a ladder. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a good point because all the claims that I was involved in were issues. So there was probably tons of claims out there where somebody showed up in a nondescript vehicle with a folding ladder and did a great job and the policyholder was happy. I think you bring up a good point in because what happens is, is when you leave and you let's say you do settle on site and the contractor's there, if you didn't resequence your line numbers and you called the windows uh, vinyl and they were aluminum, and you put a three tab where a laminate shingle should be, and you didn't resequence your line numbers, all of that coupled together, then contractor starts filling the mind of the policyholder. This person didn't know what they were doing. And if they missed all that, they didn't. And it's like, look at that. They pulled up in a Honda Civic. They just started doing this job last week. That's, you're right, that's the issue, I'm sure. So what do you think? Should a field adjuster consider their vehicle as part of their overall presentation to the insured? Does it really matter what we drive? Let's talk about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give us a like and a subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and have a great storm. 
What's up, Adjuster? Are you brand new to claims? Have you had people tell you that you've got to learn how to use Xactimate to do hurricane, hail, tornado, wildfire, wind, or water claims on houses and businesses? Well, they're absolutely right. You must know Xactimate X1 to be able to work for most companies in our industry and to give your new high paying career its best chance. Adjuster TV has put together a comprehensive Xactimate training that takes you from how to download and install Xactimate to building sketch diagrams, documenting your file, how to import and label photos, and so much more. And it's all done with signature Adjuster TV style. No frills, everything you need, and nothing you don't. And not only that, it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg because it's included as part of your Adjuster TV Plus membership. You're not gonna have to travel to take this training in person. You can do it at your own pace, and you'll be able to rewatch the trainings whenever you need a refresher for as long as you're a member. If you've never used Xactimate before, then you need this complete step-by-step -step training exclusively inside of Adjuster TV Plus. Join now at adjustertv.com slash x1. Do not show up to a job interview at an IA firm without Xactimate X1 installed on your system and you not knowing how to use it. Access this training and dozens of hours of other independent property claims training video series right now at adjustertv.com slash X1.